So for um, number 32, we want to be able to describe the solid um, that results in this integral right here. So what we're doing is we are reverse engineering it. Um, this this does say dx, so we know that we're integrating with respect um, to x, right? So let's see what happens when we take the area beneath a curve, um, generic curve f of x. This is the area from a to b. And we revolve it about a generic line, x is equal to a. Um, so when we revolve it, we're going to end up with a bunch of cylinders whose height touches the curve here, this f of x and it gets revolved to form a cylinder like so. Like this, yeah. And so we're summing up these cylinders from A to B. And so these cylinders, when we um, think of unwrapping them, sort of like a, a thin sheet of paper that gets wrapped around that axis at X is equal to A, um, this does have an area, right? And it's an area as a function of X because the further that I move along here, um, the wider that my uh, my cylinder is going to become. So it definitely changes as a function of x. Therefore, here I can say that my volume is going to be the sum from a to b of ax dx, right? If we sum up all these areas, we're going to get a volume. So all we have to do here is we have to think about how to describe um, this area of this rectangle, which is the unwrapped cylinder, uh, as a function of x. And so the area here is just going to be um, maybe I'm going to do that in green. This is just going to be base times height, right? Because it's a rectangle and the height is pretty easy. This height is just the height wherever it touches that curve, right? Um, so it's completely defined by f of x. So we're just going to say that this is f of x. Um, and so if I were further out along, I would still go wherever it touches that curve and then that would get revolved like so. Um, let me just remove that so it doesn't get too crowded. So that's f of x. And what about the base? Well, the base here is the the base of my unwrapped cylinder, which ends up being a circumference. And so a circumference is given by 2 pi r for any circle, um, but we don't want it in terms of r because we're integrating with respect to x. So we want to be able to express this r in terms of x. Um, let's see how we do that. So saying that the uh, if we're talking about this circumference here, my radius is going to go from this point A all the way out to this point, right? Um, and let's pretend, let's give it a value. Maybe let's say that um, this is the point, uh, that's not going to make too much sense because A is in, in terms of a variable. So. Um, how, how do we measure this point right here with respect to x? Well, it's just wherever I'm at on the x-axis, right? However, um, I don't measure my length from the x-axis from this line x is equal to a. I measure it from the origin, right? So it's going to go from the origin all the way out to where it meets that, um, that red arrow. So I can see here that actually this, this point right here, this coordinate, is measured from the origin. So the way that I'm going to get my red arrow is I'm going to go, okay, this total length here is the length of A, right? So I'm going to go the total length of A, which is this length, minus the length of X. It's wherever I'm at my X axis, right? Um, so maybe let me just make that a little bit more intuitively. So this length here in blue, that's just X. So if it, I were at the point um, two, that length would be two, right? So the red arrow is given by this whole length A minus that blue length minus X. So my radius therefore is going to be A minus X. And so this is gonna be two pi times A minus X, right? Uh, so let me just remove this so it doesn't get crowded. Therefore, my area is equal to base times height, which is equal to 2 pi a minus x times f of x. So what I'm going to do now, now that I have an expression for my area, right, I'm just going to plug that into my integral. So um, I'm going to have here 2, oops, that's 2 pi times um, a minus x times f of x dx. And so now we just compare uh, these expressions and let's see what matches up. 
Um, so clearly 2 pi matches with 2 pi, that's accounted for. Um, and then we can see here that this a minus x, oops, I should have done that in a different color. We can see here that this a minus x, this is equivalent to this pi minus x, right? Um, it's just a number minus a variable. And then lastly, we're gonna have that this f of x, this is going to be equivalent to my cosine x minus sine x. So in conclusion, we can say that um, the solid, this solid is generated by revolving the curve um, cosine x minus sine x about about the line about the line um, x is equal to our a is going to match up to pi right so x is equal to pi and then that uh, from um, it goes from a to b right so it goes from 0 to pi over 4 from 0 to pi over 4 and that's what we get um, this is the translation of that integral